Hey everybody, welcome back to Skincare with Chris Gibson. If you're new, I'm Chris and I am your skincare expert here to help you get your best skin ever. And on this channel, we talk about skincare techniques, we talk about skincare products, skincare gurus, skincare problems. We solve those and we're solving a big one today. So if that's your thing, please stick around, subscribe and hit that little notification bell so that you don't miss my videos when they come up each week. Now that you've found me, don't lose me. Okay guys, really excited to talk about a subject today, milia, milia mania, milia. Anyway, milia, those little hard white bumps that get on people's skin. I'm gonna talk about those today. But before I do, I wanted to thank you guys that are on Team Chris, the guys that have subscribed and are following along and sharing the videos out and it, just amazing. We've grown so much in the last just month even. It's like 500 subscribers subscribers over the last, what, 10 days? That's nuts. I really, really appreciate you guys' support. I'm here to help you, and you are really helping me out by helping the channel grow. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so again, Melia, M-I-L-I-A, or Melium, as they're really called in the skincare world. Those hard little white bumps that get on the skin that are so freaking frustrating to get rid of and hard to get rid of. Well, guess what? You're not alone if this is a problem you have because lots of people have them. I get them from time to time. I'm gonna explain why you get them, what you can do to prevent them, and I'm even gonna talk about extracting them, which is gonna probably get me in a whole hell of a lot of trouble because extraction is one of those things that everybody says, especially the uh, self-appointed skincare police, I'm not supposed to talk about that and tell you how to do it, but I extract my own and I'm gonna teach you how to do that on this video, so be sure you stick around for that. Okay, first, let's talk about why you get them. The reason you get them is really a natural process that happens on the skin. Your skin produces a protein called keratin. Sometimes some of us produce a lot of keratin and it gets trapped in a pore, a blocked pore, ooh, like that's a surprise. And then the keratin sort of builds up in there and creates this little hard rock. And even though they are quite harmless, they can occur on anybody, anywhere, and I do mean anywhere on your body, anytime. But they usually occur on the face, ears, and oftentimes around the eye area or the eyelids. I always get them right above my eyebrow. Really weird place to get them, I know, but that's what happens to me. Now, they usually do go away over time. It usually takes a month or two, and I know, ain't nobody got time for that. So, no worries, I'm gonna help you with that. Now, one really important thing you need to know, really as part of prevention, is that oftentimes these occur because of the products and makeup you're using. And as usual, it's all because of certain ingredients that are in these products. I mean, man, ingredients never lie. So if any of the products or makeup you're using have the following ingredients that I'm about to give you in them, time for a change. So you need to go and look on the labels and look for these eight things. Liquid paraffin, liquid petroleum. Paraffinum liquidum, yeah, I know, weird, right? Paraffin oil, petroleum oil, petrolatum liquid, mineral oil, lanolin, kerosene, no, not kerosene, just kidding. But the other ones, you do need to look on your labels and see if they're in your products and if they are, and you're suffering from milia on an ongoing basis, like you just keep getting them, time to change out the products because that's probably part of your problem. Yeah, again, I always say no petroleum in your skincare products, and this is just one more reason why. All right, since we now know that milia forms because the little microscopic skin cells get trapped under a pore and the keratin surrounds them and creates these little rocks, as I call them, it makes sense the main way to get rid of them is going to be an exfoliation step in your routine. And the reason we want to exfoliate is we want to take that top layer of skin that's built up over the top of the milia. We want to wear it down so that the skin can actually naturally expel milia. This is the most full, easy way, but it does take a tiny bit of time. Now that does not mean we you want to scrub them off because scrubbing them, picking at them, poking at them can actually irritate the skin around them, which is going to produce more keratin and can actually make milia larger. So we don't want to do that. So how do we treat them? Well, it's really just a few easy steps. The first thing you're going to do is steam that area that you have the milia for about five to 10 minutes with a very warm to hot washcloth. We don't want to burn the skin. We just want to apply the hot washcloth to sort of help open up the pores a little bit, soften the area so that the milia is sort of pushed forward. Now we wanna do this daily and we wanna follow that step with cleansing with a mild 
cleansing face wash that has no parabens, no sulfates, and most importantly, no oils in it. So you can pick one of your choice. I'm gonna put some suggested items in the video description box for you guys on all of these steps and what to use. But generally speaking, just a mild face wash is all that you really need. Next, we want to lightly exfoliate the area. This is on a daily basis again, using like a Buff Puff Gentle Fol Exfoliation Sponge, or you can use a light scrub. You can pick one of your choice. I'll put a suggested scrub in the video description box. There are so many out there that will work for this purpose, but we want to be doing this daily for the Amelia. So we don't want to use a really, really rough and tumble scrub. We don't want a rocky, hard scrub. This is not a deep exfoliation. This is light exfoliation that we're doing. Next on the Millie, except if it's on your eyelids or around your eyes. Anywhere else, this is a step that we want to add. If it's on your eyelids or around your eyes, you don't want to do this. But you want to use an acne spot treater. I use Clear Revolution Skin Care's camphor and salicylic acid based spot treater. But we want to apply glycolic acid and salicylic acid to the skin where the milia are. What that's going to do is help thin that layer of skin that's sitting right on the top of that so that again the skin can naturally push that through. Now you can also use a deeper facial peel or glycolic peel process if you want to speed this up. That I would suggest you use something like the Ordinary's Glycolic Peel Serum, which is a peel serum that's it's a actual peel. You only use it once or twice a week. It really deeply goes into the skin and helps exfoliate that microscopic layer. It will help remove milia pretty quickly. Again, it's not a product you can use around your eyelids or your eyes. It's a product you can use anywhere else on your skin or your face. So be aware of that when we're dealing with the eyelids and the eyes, it's a super sensitive area. So anything that's acid-based or a peel product, something like that, or a scrub, we certainly don't want to use that there. Now those steps should help you remove, reduce, and prevent the amount of milia that occur on your skin. And again, changing those products out is going to be a big part of this. If you have products that have like waxes and petroleum type of mineral oils or any of that kind of stuff in there, it's one of those things that really helps block pores instead of keeping them open. And that's what starts the whole problem. So these steps alone will get your skin or your milia under control and removed in about seven to 10 days, about a week. If that's not fast enough for you, well, now we can talk about how to extract them on the spot. And even though this is a fairly simple process, I must tell you, you do this at your own risk, mainly because I'm not there to see how well you sterilize things or how you apply the process that I'm about to describe to you. So at your own risk, Again, if you're not comfortable doing the extraction, don't do it, use the other steps, or go see your dermatologist. Now, I remove my own milia when I get them myself. I'm very confident in the process because a dermatologist taught me how to do it, and it is a very simple process. The first thing you wanna do is cleanse the area with a mild face wash and pat the area dry. Then you're gonna take a needle, a very sharp needle, and you're gonna just cut the skin right on top of the milia. It shouldn't bleed because that skin is usually just the outer, very outer layer. You're gonna cut a little scission, just a tiny one, right across the top of the milia and maybe a little bit to the side. Then you're gonna take a pair of sterile tweezers like this, and you're going to lightly, gently press, just lightly press on the edges of the milia till it pops out the little incision that you've made. Voila, you've removed it. Then all you need to do is apply a little antiseptic and you can go about your normal skincare routine. So simple to do this. Now again, we don't want to put a needle in our eye. So if you have it on your eyelid, try using the cleansing and steaming method or go see your dermatologist. I don't want you sticking needles in the skin on your eye. That's not a good thing to do. And again, please make sure you sterilize anything that you put in your skin, like a needle or tweezers or anything, anything you should be using on a regular basis in your skin care routine that's metal or goes and touches the skin should always, always be sterilized. Now, if you continue to have problems with milia showing up on your skin, you can add a step to your routine that's been shown to be that's been shown to be very helpful and that is a retinol cream there is a huge selection of those but a retinol cream the retinol in the cream or serum even that you're using helps regulate that keratin production and it makes it much less likely that you'll get milia on your skin in the first place so a really inexpensive way to treat this and it works very very well now i hope you found this video helpful in dealing with milia i know it can be frustrating and, and it can be a little cumbersome but they really aren't that hard to deal with. It's not really a serious condition. Uh, again, if you find something with your skin that's really seems off to you, you should always go see your dermatologist. And if you have a particular problem with these showing up, it's really good to go see one anyway, because sometimes they can identify what's triggering them for you. Now, I would love to hear what your skincare concerns are in the comments below. I actually read all my comments and I do comment back. So if you don't mind, please let me know what's working for you, what's not working for you, and I'll probably do a video on it. Until then, 
I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me in the channel, and I will see you over on the next video.